In this video, I'll demonstrate how to install PHD Virtual Backup for VMware vSphere, including how to install the plugin to vSphere client, and how to deploy and configure the PHD Virtual Backup appliance. Prior to this demo, I downloaded the PHD Virtual Backup installation package and extracted the contents here. The package includes an executable that's used to install the plugin and console, an OVF file for the Virtual Backup appliance, and documentation. To begin, I'll double-click the installation executable. I'll click Next, accept the license agreement, select a location, then click Next again to begin the installation. PHD Virtual Backup is installed along with the integrated menus for vSphere Client. Next, I'll deploy a PHD Virtual Backup appliance. The appliance is a small virtual machine that performs the backup and recovery processing. I'll open vSphere Client, then select File Deploy OVF Template. I'll select the OVF from the installation package, then click Next. Using the wizard, I'll specify where the appliance should be deployed. I'll leave the default disk format of thick and set the network my appliance should use. I'll review the deployment settings, then click Finish. When deployment completes, I'll close the dialog and power on the appliance virtual machine. Next, I'll use the PHD console to complete the configuration. I'll right click within vSphere Client and select PHD Virtual Backup Console from the plugin menu. The console opens to the dashboard and displays any available PHD VBAs. In order for the VBA to be displayed, though, it must first have obtained an IP address. If DHCP is enabled in your environment, as it is in mine, the VBA will automatically obtain an address when it's powered on. I can see my VBA's address here. If DHCP is not available, you'll need to manually assign an address using the Virtual Machine Console within the vSphere Client. With the VBA Virtual Machine selected, click the Console tab. Then click within the window and type Control N to open the Network Configuration menu. Here you can assign an IP address and configure other required network settings like a subnet and gateway. Once the VBA obtains an address, it's available in the PHD console and you can continue with the configuration. Note that after the VBA is configured, you can use the PHD console to update the network settings in the Configuration Areas Network tab. I'll click Configuration to open the General Configuration options. Here I can enter the time zone details and hypervisor credentials. I'll accept the default time zone and NTP values and can see that my vCenter server's IP address is automatically discovered. If I was connected directly to an ESX or ESXi host, the host's address would be included here instead. I just need to enter a password for the administrator account. Next I'll click the Backup Storage tab. This is where I'll define where to store my backups. Using the drop-down menu, I can select Attach Disk, SIFS, or an NFS share. For this demo, I'm going to use an attached virtual disk to store my backups. First, I need to add the disk to my VBA virtual machine. I'll jump back into vSphere Client, right-click the Appliance VM, and then select Edit Settings. I'll click Add, select Hard Disk, then click Next. I'll select to create a new virtual disk, then enter a size, accepting the default values for the other options. For the mode, I'll select Independent Persistent, then finish the wizard. The virtual disk is attached and formatted by the VBA automatically. Attached disks are limited to 2 terabytes in size each. If I needed to create a backup data store greater than 2 terabytes, I could add additional disks now. 
PHD's Virtual Storage Pool technology presents all attached disks as a single backup data store. Now I'll jump back into the PHD console again and save and reboot the appliance. Additional configuration options, including email and retention settings, are available, but they're not required to begin running backups. Refer to the documentation and online help for additional details. When the VBA restarts, I'm ready to begin creating backup jobs to protect the virtual machines in my environment. That completes the steps required for installing PHD Virtual Backup for VMware vSphere. Thanks for watching. For additional videos, documentation, and information about current and upcoming releases, visit the PHD Virtual website at www.phdvirtual.com.